Meyer Metcalf, ESPN.com. For uh, James and Julius, how, how much has Andrew grown uh, just as a leader over these last couple months for this team? James? Um, he's grown a lot. Uh, he's listening to Coach really well, and uh, he's doing a good job of leading us and getting us into our offense and uh, just really executing our offense for us. Yeah, good. like James said, um, you know, he's just doing a great job of leading us. You know, when things get tough, uh, he's picking us up, and, you know, he's just listening to what Coach is saying, and it's uh, – it's working out for him. Right back here. John, uh, John Clay, Lexington Air Leader. I just wondering if you had an update on Willie's situation. I, I would tell you he's still in the boot. He's doubtful. He's acting like he thinks he can do something, and I'm. You know, I would be stunned if he played in this game. But he's saying that. Uh, he may want to give it a try, but he hadn't been out of that boot. So he went down and hit it pretty good. Right here. Uh, just a quick follow-up to that. Uh, There's some talk about it could have been an Achilles. He said he hurt no, a pop. Not no, an Achilles. It's, a, it's an ankle. Okay. It's his ankle. Not an Achilles. And then to the to any of you guys up there, <coughs> you see any any again, we've used the word irony at different points in this run. You have a chance to be the only the second group of five freshman starters to go to a Final Four, and you would go through Michigan, uh, home of the Fab Five, to get there. What do you think of that, Dakari? Uh, well, we do, we don't pay much attention to that. Um, we just play each game and take one game at a time, and just focus on winning ball games. Andrew, you want to try that? Um, yeah, um, really can't pay attention to um, stuff like that. Yes, but you just have to go out there and play every game like it's your last. Right here. Rick Pizzo from the Big Ten Network. John, for those of us that didn't get to see your team all throughout the year, is there one or two things that you can point to that you guys have done in the postseason and late that you didn't do in some of your losses during the regular season? We grew up. We have 18 and 19-year-olds that were counted out and, you know, uh, ridiculed and crushed and can't play, not any good, bad guys. I mean, you got a bunch of good guys up here that have stuck together through all the barrage, never let it affect them together. They kept believing and they believed in the staff and, and, and they know, you know, because I told them all the, the whole time, I'm never going to give up on any individual or a team. I won't. I'll go to whatever we got to try to do to do this. But a lot of the issues we had come back to me. The stuff that we tweaked before the tournament, I should have done two months before, and they know it. The stuff that I did before the NCAA tournament, I should have done that earlier. Um, you know, some of the things we did now are more based on games. Like, we got to prepare if Willie doesn't play, which means we got to tweak our offense a little bit, we got to tweak our defense a little bit. He may not be in the game. Um, hopefully he's able to limp his way in there and give us a few minutes, but maybe he can't. Right up here in front. Hey, John, uh, Eddie Pels from AP. You, you played, you know, undefeated, defending national champ, defending runner-up. There was so much talk about this bracket. Are, when you just look at the quality, <clears throat> is it still kind of mind-boggling the teams you're having to go through? Well, we all talk about it on the bus after that everybody says that game was the best game ever played, and this game was also a classic, and we're like – we're so tired, we don't know. We have no idea if it was a good game, a bad game. We just know we won. Let's get something to eat and go to bed. The only thing I can tell you is we keep just moving on. The best thing about this for me as a coach, I've continued to coach like it's midseason. Now, somebody will say, well, he's been nicer. That's why. The How nice was I, Julius, last night? Yeah. You want to ask Alex how nice I was? How was I with you in the first half? You're messing around. I mean, I'm holding them accountable, but they're playing the way they need to play, so I don't have to do it that often. But I told them, if you slip, I'm going to be right there. And that's the best thing is they've continued to get better, and they're getting better, and they're, 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 you could see they're believing in each other. And you, the biggest thing I keep coming back to, they're losing each other they're losing their self, themselves in the team, but they're figuring out 
less, sacrifice a little bit, less is more for them as a player. And that's what's been the biggest thing in my mind that's gone on for them. Right here. Uh, Jermaine Franklin with TSN. Uh, Coach, last night you mentioned that perhaps T Tennessee should have won that game. Um, did you see anything in those last minutes that you hope to take advantage of with Michigan? Um, well, when I said that, I don't mean a play. I'm saying they had their chances to win that game and had the ball and should have won the game. Didn't go their way. The ball missed it. You know, but um, I thought that they got really aggressive. Um, they never quit playing. Kwanzaa coaches that way. You know, they're, they're a reflection of him and his personality. They kept fighting. Um, they struggled with their two big man lineup because someone was going to have to guard a dribbler. We're a little different. Um, you know, and that, that took one of their big men out of the game. But again, you found out in that game, if you give them threes, they are making them. So your hope is to make them tough threes. They may make them anyway. So, I, you know, somebody said, what can you do? I said, dim the lights, open up some doors, hope there's a wind blowing, I don't know. But they're gonna shoot them anyway. Right here, Tim. Tim Sullivan, Louisville Courier Journal for Andrew. Uh, reflecting on what uh, Coach Calipari just said about sacrifice, how has your role changed and your decision making <coughs> changed over the last few weeks? Question for Andrew. I'm just trying to get my teammates involved a little bit more. I'm just trying to push the ball, um, just make the game a little faster, and um, just find people in transition. Right up here in front. Uh, Brett Dawson with Rivals.com for Aaron and Julius. I wonder if you could just say, talk, well, what's the hardest part of playing a, on a team with so many freshmen and just a couple of sophomores, and maybe what's the best part of playing on a team that's so young? Aaron, you go first. Um, I mean, I really don't, like, this is the only college team I've ever been on, so I really don't know, like, <laughs> and then, um, the best thing about it is just that we all, we all go through the same things. I mean, we all get criticized and we all get blamed and, and things like that, but the best, and, and we, we, we came together and, and I think that's the best thing that. Yeah, like Aaron said, I mean, uh, this is the only college team I played on and, um, this is the only thing I know. Um, I can say, I mean, the hardest part about playing with, you know, all the talent we have is, you know, just figuring each other out. Um, you know, just figuring out how to sacrifice ourselves. On, you know, but I mean, the the best thing is, I mean, all we've been through, we came together, and you know, it just never, it never phased us. That was Julius for ASAP. Right here. Rachel Lindsay from the Toledo Blade. I'm curious about Michigan. What kind of presence does Jordan Morgan pose, you know, physically and tactically against Kentucky? And, you know, how have you seen him improve and grow for Michigan? And what little maybe you've seen of them? Who's that for? Oh, pardon. Who's it for? Who, Question. Who, who? Oh, for anybody up here. Well, they wouldn't know. So <laughs> let me answer that. Um, <laughs> he is much better than you think. He understands how a big man in that offense has to play. He does a great job of screening. He does a great job of slipping. He will fly up and down the floor. Um, he understands in pick and rolls how to get the man on his body yet fly down the middle. So he plays, understand his role, his role in this offense uh, much better than everybody thinks he is or gives him enough credit for. He is really, really good. Right in the back. Uh, Myron McCaff, ESPN.com. Uh, John, what's the difference between the Andrew Harrison who arrived on campus you know, last summer and who? Andrew Harrison, the, the guy who arrived last summer and the guy that we're seeing now? He understands the grind better, how you have to work. Um, he understands the effect he has on his team more than ever, that he's got to be more focused on his teammates than himself. He's understanding that defense matters and you got to fight ball screens and you got to play defense. Um, but he's just, he's matured. You know, he got it on campus in August. 
It's when he can't, got on campus. So, you know, this is, you know, uh, for him and, and really all these guys, where they've come, where they were and where they've come, it's incredible. Incredible story. Back in the back right here. Uh, for uh, Brennan Quinn, M Live Media Group, uh, for John, you and Beeline, both with, I think, 22 years as Division One head coaches, it's the first time you are actually going head to head. Have you watched him from afar, or kind of what do you just think of his, his body of work, I guess, in general? Well, one, I, I really respect him as a coach. He's, he's played a, um, a different style. He took the Princeton and took it and did what he wanted to do with it. Um, but a lot of the same principles. Um, I love that he creates a culture wherever he goes, which is what he wants the culture to be. Um, and I love the fact that he's just a good guy. He's a good man. And, uh, you know, you always, you want to be in that kind of company. You want to be, you know, if I see him out or see him at mass or whatever, he's, he's always has a, a good comment for you or how are you, what's going on, and he's a good man. A terrific, terrific basketball coach. Right here. Uh, Jermaine Franklin with TSN. Um, this is for Coach and maybe even James. Uh, how do you or how do you plan on dealing with uh, Nick Stauskas? He's good. I mean, you know, you could say we're going to try to not let him shoot any balls. He's going to get off threes. Um, they're going to dribble at and run him back door. He's going to get a lot of handoffs. Um, you can't say, well, he's a hard right driver. He'll go either way. Um, but you do know if you lose him in transition, if you lose him on tra in, in uh, penetration, and he's open, don't even try to rebound it. Just run back. So you've got to know that guarding him. He's that good. James? Um, really just keep a high hand at all times. And uh, you can't really just keep him from not shooting. So just try to limit his shots and uh, just keep a high hand. Right here. This is for, uh, for John uh, Ben Strauss from the New York Times. Uh, when you get you know 18-year-old kids on, on campus and they take some of the criticism that they have this year, um, maybe particularly Andrew and, and Aaron, is that hard for you? They all, they, it's been on every one of them. So. Is, it, is it hard for you to see uh, sort of the reaction when, when you're not winning as well? And how do you deal with that, you know, when you're coaching? Well, one of the things is we talk about it all the time. We do. You know, um, we talk about social media. We train them in social media. It's not going away and get them to understand there are a lot of haters and bullies out there. You can't deal with it, don't read it. Uh, social media is a chance for you to send out a message that you want, to be positive, to pick people up, to let people know, um, and we try to teach them that. Now, do they see some of that other stuff? They do. And you gotta grow up kind of fast and not have it phase you. Now, does it make me mad? Yes, it does. Yeah, oh yeah, because some of it's personal, some of it's agenda-driven, where guys want to hurt the program, and they're taking it out on these kids, and it's not right, but they withstood it all. It made them better. It made them stronger. Right here in front. Joanne Barnes, Detroit Free Press. A question for James and for Julius. Can you describe or tell a story about what it's like playing for your coach? James? Like Coach Cal? Oh. Uh, <laughs> um, he, he teaches me, he taught me a lot of things that I didn't know about basketball coming in here. And uh, uh, even when I'm having a bad day, he keeps me up and just he's always positive to me. And, um, I'm not always positive to you. <laughs> tell him the truth. <laughs> Uh, I wasn't positive yesterday. <laughs> yeah, yesterday. But uh, <laughs> but he just taught me a lot of stuff, and um, really, he just he, he just really taught me a lot of stuff. I got it. Uh, <laughs> you just tell him the truth. Yeah, if y'all want to know the truth, though, it's hard. It is. Uh, no, I'm joking. But um, you know, he's just you know he's tough on us. Um, but it's for it's the best thing for us. You know, he's gonna push us every day. Uh, you may not like it some days, but at the end of the day, you know, it's what's best for us. And it's just not um, about basketball. I mean, it's what he's teaching us. 
goes far beyond basketball. It's a lot of life lessons. So, uh, you know, just got to take it in stride every day. Right here. Question for John. Coach, uh, over here, doesn't matter. Coach, you've got three Texans on your roster. Is it any more or less challenging? Where, where is this person? Right here. Look to your left. Over here. Yes. Thank you. You have three Texans on your roster. Is it more or any less challenging to recruit kids out of Texas or far away distances to come to Lexington? We have kids from all over the country. If they're from Texas or California or Wyoming or South Dakota and they're going to be good players for us and they want this challenge, this isn't for every player. This is, raise your hand if it's, it was been hard. Raise your hand if this is really hard. Ra <laughs> Tim, you can put your hand down. Uh, raise both hands if it's like, like ridiculously hard. This isn't for everybody, it just isn't. So they gotta know that you're under the gun, it's all over you, that it's a coat every day, 24 hours that you wear. Um, and that to, to do this, at this level, you gotta, you gotta understand the grind is a big part of it. You gotta understand it's not always gonna be the next step up. And so we'll go get players from wherever we have to go get them. Um, Texas just happened to have these three. You know, Detroit, Brooklyn, New Jersey, and Florida, Dakari, Lexington. So, we have time for two more for the assembled group, and we'll go right back here in the back, and then we'll come over to the side. Zach Osman, uh, Indianapolis star coach. You talked about Michigan's offense, and, and it's, there's been a lot of talk about kind of a changed cast of characters for them in the last two years. What about that system just makes it work regardless of kind of who Coach Beeline has? Just what makes that work no matter who you plug in, I guess? Well, he has veterans that goes along with these young kids that he has, and it makes it easier because they, they can – be coached by him and each other. And what they're trying to do is more of a, it's not running plays, it's more of how do we play to create good shots for each other. You know, it, it may be a, a down screen, but he may slip. It may be I'm popping this time and I'm gonna go into a handoff. You know, there's back doors in it, and, it, and it's more of a, a, a free flowing quote, Princeton kind of offense, yet they play fast. They're scoring a lot of points. It's not like they don't, they're scoring 55 points. They don't, you know, he's not doing that. But I tell you what, he's, he's got these kids bought into their role in that offense. And I think that's what, uh, that's a challenge of coaching young players. And he's done, he's done, you know, unbelievable work in getting those kids to really believe and accept their role. Do you have one for the student athletes? If not, okay, go ahead. Uh, Matt Jones, KSR. To Andrew and Julius, after all the bumps in, in the road, do you, have you guys had fun these last couple of weeks? You all, I've seen more smiles collectively from this group than all year. Is it, can you talk a little bit about what these last couple of weeks have been like for you? Andrew? Um, yeah, we, we've started to have a lot more fun. And um, Coach tells us whoever has more fun usually wins, so that's what we just try to do. And we're trying to play together. Julius? Yeah, for sure. I mean, um, you know, we've had a lot of tough parts, but at the end of the day, um, we've came together and, you know, definitely these last couple of weeks have been more fun. And, I mean, that's just kind of a goal for us, just to have more fun and know the team playing and feel like we're doing that. All right, we will now dismiss the student athletes for the breakout rooms. Uh, if you go out and to your left, follow the signs. James yeah. Young will be in interview room eight. Julius Randall in interview room nine. Dakari Johnson in interview room 10, Aaron Harrison in interview room 11, and Andrew Harrison in interview room 12. And then we'll continue here for uh, Coach John Vincent Calipari. Right here. Cal, you've seen a lot of teams with really high profile freshmen not kind of get to this point. I wonder, should this year Say something about how hard it is to do what you guys have done year in, year out. I don't know. I'm just happy we're playing better right now. Because I'm telling you, we, we almost ran out of runway when we landed the plane. And matter of fact, the nose of the plane was in grass. But we got down. And that's all we were trying to do is land a plane. And, and um, if the runway was 25 games instead of 30 games, we probably went off the edge.
just happy for this team. Right here. John, Rick Pizzo again with the Big Ten Network. To follow up on the conversation about the guys taking a lot of criticism and what you do with them off the court, social media, how much of your job, especially with freshman-laden teams, is psychologist? How much of it is actual basketball coach? Well, first of all, you know, I was really happy to hear Julius talk about life lessons because a lot of things that we do and I do, getting them to read different books, talking about different ways that they can handle themselves, talking about you're in a position right now, fame and fortune, money has wing and, and fame's is, fame is fleeting. So you have an opportunity to make somebody feel good, spend 15 seconds. Sign an autograph, take a picture. What? How hard is that? You make their month, you make their year. They'll talk about it for the next five years, and it took you five seconds. Um, we talk about life lessons of if you make life about everybody else instead of yourself, it becomes a lot easier. Well, that's the game of basketball. So those are the kind of things that you have to do with young kids because the only thing they're thinking about when they come to me is themselves. And that's what they should be like. They're freshmen who dominated the ball, did whatever they want. Most of them never really got challenged, never got coached that way. I'm not saying they didn't get coached, but they never got challenged. They were always by far the best player. So that's a challenge we have, all, all coaches, coaching young players. But I try to make it more than just basketball. I really do. Um, Rachel Lindsay from the Toledo Blade. Uh, clearly, your team's a lot different from last year's team at the NIT, but besides the lineup, what else is different about this team? Is it a different well, mentality, if a different makeup? If Nerlens didn't get hurt, we'd have been an NCAA tournament team and probably advanced. Um, even without him, when we beat Florida and Missouri, two ranked teams, I thought we were still going to get in, and we didn't. Um, then we proved that the committee was probably right and we were wrong when we lost the first game of uh, the NIT. Um, but the big difference was we didn't have as many guys. This team was never going to be last year's team. This team has size, talent, skill. We just had to come together as a team. Right back here. Uh, Brennan Quinn, M Live Media Group. Uh, in, you talked about their three-point shooting, but uh, on the other side, Michigan's kind of had difficulty defending off the bounce and, and driving lanes and things like that throughout the season, what do you see defensively that you think you might be able to exploit tomorrow? I, you know, again, they're, they're better than you think defensively because they really cover elbows and blocks, and they're also going to play that 1-3-1. One, one. So they're going to throw some stuff at us. And you have to understand, I've got 16 hours to get these guys ready. The good news is, well, he had about 19 hours. So you don't have the time to go and say, here, you know, here's the 12 things they're going to do, and defensively, here's what they're going to do. You just don't have time. It's going to be our best, hopefully, against their best, and see who comes out on top. Neither one of us are going to change much. They play how they do. We play how we do. Right here. Coach, I, I know you've been asked this a million times. I know you've been practicing longer, banging a little bit more. Is there any thing else you could say about what you've tweaked or changed without having um, to kill us all I'm I'm gonna wait till it's over and then I'll go through everything that we did and when I did it and then when you when you hear what I did you'll say it makes perfect sense and then you're gonna ask why didn't you do it earlier and I'm gonna tell you I don't know should have one little tweak go no, ahead I mean should it be obvious? Pretty much. Okay. So we Pretty need, much. We need to go watch more film. And then most of you guys are not basketball bennies. You're reading each other to see if someone else caught it because you didn't. So I'm torturing some of you guys. Right here. <coughs> Coach Ryan Armani from Fox in Detroit. Um, Kentucky and Louisville is such a great rivalry in all of college sports. Is there any potential, and I know it's the game tomorrow night is for a Final Four, but is there any potential for a letdown after such an emotional win against your rivalry or anything like that? There is, but I'm telling you honestly, we 
the whole, do not make this game bigger than it is. My kids are not, in most cases, I've got probably four from the state of Kentucky, maybe five. The rest of these kids, and they're young, they don't know about that rivalry. Now, our fans do. Their fans do. But is there a chance for a letdown? There's a chance for a letdown because the last two games we played were just like slugfests. But I don't think it would be based on you just played Louisville and now you're going to let your guard down. I don't think so. But there still could be a letdown because that was a hard-fought game and so was the one before. Questions for Coach?